that thing. This is the first time that we're ever teaching this class, right? Um, it's something I'm kind of passionate about. Um, I guess I recently got my walker in the middle just for tournament raving. Um, I read a lot of the highest profile tournaments. I'm, because of all of the tournament fighting I've done and all of the reaving I've done, I'm very passionate about the need for tournament reaving. And uh, unfortunately, right now, our best reaves are generally, well, who's a, who's a warlord, right? Because they've been in the most tournaments and they've been in the most fights. But I think that's not, I mean, that's not a good or sustainable thing. And I think we have a serious lack of training for people who are interested in it. I think a lot of people would really like to participate in the game. And it's a good place for people to participate and help out but we need to be making sure we're getting training. So as this is the first time that we teach it, y'all guys are gonna be a little bit of our guinea pigs. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of good information. There's no worry about that. How we put it together and everything. Please give us feedback afterwards. Um, if you don't wanna do it directly to us, there's the cards that you can take at the end. Uh, they'll be where you'll write kind of what you thought of all your classes. It's a general feedback for the entire event. There's a comment section, please leave comments there because it is something that we're gonna be teaching again um, it's something that we want to do more training in, so let us know what you think. Um, so kind of how this class is going to go. Um, first of all, this is about turning reaving. If anyone had any questions, we are not going to be talking about field reaving. There is, of course, going to be a lot of crossover, but this will be completely turning focused. Um, we're going to go through sort of the lecture portion of it. There's going to be some... <laughs> some you know, back and forth, any questions you have that we'll be talking about at the beginning of the lecture portion. And then towards the end, we're going to be doing a lot of probably the two of us fighting, and we're going to bring people up, and we're going to kind of role play through situations <coughs> so we can learn how to deal with those situations. Okay. Um, so the first thing, it's real simple. Make sure we know the rules of the game, right? <laughs> There's a surprising number of situations that you're going to come across that a lot of people don't know the rules to, right? Um, a great example that I was bringing up to him. Okay, yeah. Now. Yeah, exactly. Is uh, so I'm, you know, I'm fighting him, right? When we both go in and hit each other in the leg, then I cross over, hit him in the arm, and he hits me in the leg at the same time. Boom. I got hit in the leg, but that's two I haven't dropped yet. I'm now going to drop and I'm going to take the leg. So what happened? So what's the rule? Yeah, you should have said posting or dropped prior to throwing your next shot. Exactly. I have to do it prior to the next shot. If I'm taking the shot... Take the shot then, as you're dropping, because that's a big one that, that gets questioned too. So for me, I think that if you're drop, if you are in full drop, that I generally let them yeah. take that as a not death, right? Because yeah. you are in full drop. But if you are going to post and take a second shot and then drop, that's a death, right? right? Your shot counted, so did his, right? It's a simple situation that, that comes across kind of frequently that a lot of people don't really know the rule on, right? Because people, it's go, it goes like this, boom, boom, and I'm dropping down, right? It was just my leg. It's not quite how it works, right? So. That's a little thing, but it all comes back to know the rules of your game. It's a simple first step, but it's obviously absolutely imperative. Um, the second thing, and this is going to kind of cover what you were talking about, is this is going to take practice. You're going to have to watch a lot of fights. You're talking about like you're not really sure when a shot is late or not. I could tell you the rule, but the honestly, you're probably just not seeing it very well. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly it. And there's no words that I can tell you to make you see it better, right? So I would suggest that if y'all are really serious about this, try to read someone's sparring, right? And let them call their own shot <coughs> however you want, but you call it too, and just practice to see if you get it right. In your head, not to that. <laughs> and if they're down with it, and you say, tell them, like, hey, I'm going to work on it. That's okay. And they're going with it. <laughs> yeah. Establish that ahead of time. Right, right, right. Establish right. that ahead of time. <laughs> but, yeah, this is going to take practice. One of the reasons that currently the best reads are warlords is it's because the ones... Is there a bee over there? <laughs> I don't like bees. 
Yeah. <laughs> Freaking out a little. All right. Uh, one of the reasons Warlord's currently the best fighter is this just because, well, we've had the most practice with dealing with what's late, what's not, seeing it, and practicing. We've seen the most fights. I mean, not only do we fight a ton, but we sit there and we watch our friends spar. If we have a three-way round robin that we just keep doing winner stays, you sit there and you watch as many fights as you fight. Right. So it is it is just practice unintentionally. So I, I fully believe you do not need to be a fighter to learn that ability, learn that skill. I fully believe that you have to practice and you want to be able to make those high end calls and, and you know you want if if you're gonna be reaving the key battle you know, the key tournament, which is the largest tournament in the year, you don't wanna be like, ah, I've never really watched fighting but I think I've got this, right? <laughs> you know, you need to have put in a lot of practice. I know the rules. <laughs> right. And there's just there's gonna be no substitute for it. Yeah, I know. Alright. So the next thing I wanna talk about is sort of what you see and how it works with the human brain and everything. So it turns out, if you, I don't want to get deep into the studies, but basically, in between what you see and how it's registered in your brain, there's a ton of information that is lost. But your brain will take what it sees and piece it together into its own image, right? So you're not actually picking up and constantly seeing all this motion and everything that hits. It's taking things like the sound, the movement, what you see afterwards, and creating all of these in-betweens and basically putting a picture together in your head. Okay. The reason this is kind of important is you have to understand that what you see is not actually the best information. Okay. You might get it right, but you might get it wrong even if you think you saw it. Okay. This goes into a couple of parts that I think is really important in reaving. Number one, try your best to use everything, all the senses at your disposal. Mainly sound, okay? The more you fight, the more you'll realize that there is a very different sound between, in fact, I'm going to show the shield real quick. There are much different impacts to a graze. There's a different impact to a leather belt, to a cloth belt, and you can hear that to a tabard or a body. And you can tell the difference of that. Sometimes you can tell whether it is a body above the waist or below the waist just because of that. Right. So why don't you swing at my shoulder so that you're barely, I'm barely blocking and then you're hitting me. Okay. Now. You see how there's a very different sound to my body versus my shield? Now, learning to hear that along with what you see is going to create is going to make you a much better and much more accurate read color, uh, color of shots. Because the problem with a lot of these shots is, did that hit him? It's real hard to tell, right? I would tell you I didn't hit him, even though I'm almost touching him. If you're relying on your sight alone to figure out if I hit you right here, you're almost in a guessing game, right? So those other tells like sound, like seeing what the opponent's reaction is, right? If you see them get hit and they go, oh, you know, like, you're on that, right? You hear it, you see it, you have to use all the keys or all the different little tells that you're getting to be the best caller, right? And some of those might, you might have the guy who it comes over and you see it right here. And then that tell he's talking about, he throws his shield down as it was an arm. You saw where that shot was. How's that an arm? Right. Right? right. So that's a really common one too. It is a very common one. Yeah. That's why I wanted to point it out. Right. And uh, it is common, and as we're about to go into, basically, uh, I would tell you that it's not, I would not call that person a cheater, right? That person who throws his arm down. And we'll talk about that later when we're going into the psychology. But, it's one of the most important things is to realize these are high pressure situations. Just like you might make a bad call, they might make a bad call. And just like you're going to make a bad call that you believe was a good call, they may make a bad call that they believe was a good call, right? So we'll talk about it. If you've been fighting long enough, you've been hit in the shoulder 
and you've dropped the sword, and you're like, no, no, no I'm dead, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But you're just used to, when you get out over in that area, you want to change and go as fast as possible, and then you realize it was on the verge, and you're like, no, I'm dead. Well, they might have just made that wrong call, and that's up to you to correct them. Right? Okay. All right. So that's kind of some of the stuff going into the fight. Now we're going to say, basically, now getting into the fight and how we're starting. The first thing that we're going to talk about is, I wrote it down, is establishing dominance and expectations. Now, that's, that's a little bit of a harsh word, right? It's true. This should be a calm authority type thing. The last thing you want to do is go at it from a position of power, right? When, but we're, we're, we'll go further into that in psychology. But so when we're talking about established dominance and expectations, right? When you have two people come to your ring. You don't want to sit back, have the two people come to your ring, go like, okay, let's go ahead. Okay, nice. Boom, boom, cool, I got it, right? It's not the sort of reaving that you want to be doing, right? In order to be a good reave, you want to take control of that fight pretty early on. They come in, they go, okay, y'all are good. If you'll go to the two sides, all right? Are both y'all ready? Excellent, lay on, right? Let them fight the second it's done. You go, okay, stop, back up, that's one zero. All right, ready? Lay on, right? Make sure you are that authority figure or the person who's running it from the beginning. This is going to help everything run a little bit more smoothly. It's going to help you stay in control of the fight, right? Because if they're just swinging by themselves, it's sometimes like, wait, what happened? Wait, wait, did that? And then they're fighting again, and you're like, oh no. And you start getting behind, and you're not paying attention well. You want to be firm, you don't want to be harsh. You're going to be like, hold on, hold on. You stand there, you stand there, all right? What I see happens, anything else, doesn't count. Ready, go. Yeah. It, it, it's a different feel to, all right, well, okay, you're over here, you're over here. Everybody ready? You ready? You ready? Lay on. Right. Yeah, definitely. So there's got to be some firmness. The, the second thing that Hold I on, say, a question over real here. quick, and maybe you were going to go into this, but what about Iron Man or like the first stage of a world sports tournament where time is an issue and the fighters may not be so comfortable waiting on a rematch? Right. So that's going to be a little bit of a different situation. If you're in an Iron Man, it's kind of an expectation that the person, for the next person comes out, taps, and begins fighting. The thing is, is that is an expectation between both fighters across the board, mm -hmm. right? In that situation, you just do your best to make the right calls on the shots. Because coming into a 1v1, the expectations are kind of like, well, this guy might be like, yeah, we'll just tap and swing, and this guy's like, well, give me a second or whatever. It's better that you step in and set what, how the pace of the tournament right there. You can also do the exact same thing prior to the Iron Man starting with the whole lineup. You can, you can lay down how it's gonna go. And they can come in, and you can still say, when you come in, I'll say lay on, rather than tapping and immediately swinging. Because if giving them the chance to tap, and then you telling them lay on when you're ready, it's not going to make an outcome. It's not going to change the outcome of how many wins you're getting in that 20 minutes. Right, and there's there's something to that. If that's how you want to set it, and you want to, that's okay. Just make sure you're communicating it before. Yeah. The biggest thing is that there's an accepted pace, and that it is communicated, and everyone goes into it like that. In a one-on-one -on -one that is not timed, I would almost all, almost in every situation like you to stop it, take control, have them set, and start it on your call, start the next fight on your call, you need to be in control of the situation. And right. it's good for the fighters too. When the fighters come into the field, they are worrying about dealing with their opponent. They don't need to be worried about setting up that tournament fight. You need to take that away from them. Right. That's not something they have to should have to deal with. Is this guy ready? Is this the time that we start? You know, right. take that off their shoulders and, and put that on you. That is your job. Uh, another thing, just as long as we're talking about it, I guess we can role play the situation later. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll just talk about it now because it's good. A big thing that I like to do is if you're going to have them tap in, which a lot of people want to tap in, I am very big on telling everyone, have them tap in, back up, and then you call lay on. The last thing you want to deal with is you go like, okay, tap in and fight, and they go, okay, tap and they're like, I got it. 
Yeah, and then you have to sit there and be like, well, <laughs> technically by my rules, he was actually just being a dick and still won. Like, how do I call the in-between, right? Mm -hmm. So things like that, the more you take control, the start, right? And once again, this is not in a rude, demanding way, but just affirm. The more you take control of the start, the more you take the little things that are going to cause problems out of the tournament, right? And that's, a lot of that's going to be your job, is just negating as much of the possible issues as possible. All right. uh, then we say set expectations, okay? This is especially in uh, higher risk tournaments, you know, like where there's more on the line, but kingdom level. honestly, any tournament you can do this, especially the first round, is when the fighters come in, I like to tell them what my expectations from them are, okay? So for me personally, I like to communicate specifically that I want to make sure they are communicating anything that touches them, right? A graze is not a good shot. There are shots that will hit the shield and barely touch you, and it is not a good shot, right? But if I see someone taking that shot, knowing something hit them just barely, and continuing fighting without communicating, I will be of the assumption that they did not take a good shot, and I will call it on them. If you want to tell me afterwards, no, it wasn't hard enough, I will still stay firm on my call. You need to let me know, communicate as things happen, right? This is a big part of stopping situations that become problems in many tournaments, right? That idea that like, I thought I hit him, and he's like, oh no, it was just a graze, and it's, the fight's already ended. The person's already killed them, and now we're trying to back up out of things, decide, you know, like, oh, what happened, right? So, when we bring people into the ring, we want to communicate expectations clearly from the beginning so that they don't have room to make these arguments. And just because they feel like it's a graze doesn't mean that it's not a shot that we should call. Right. But they need to communicate why they're not taking that shot that someone might call on them. Right? And I, I'm sure we've all seen it in a lot of fights. A lot of fighters, especially ones that respect each other, will go, no, that was light, that was a graze, mm -hmm. and you move on. Right. Right. And there are, and like you said, there's situations, just in, having especially in tournaments, that there are things that you'll be like, no, that was light, there's no, it barely touched me. And then, like, 15 seconds later, you're like, why is my shoulder still stinging? <laughs> like, I probably should have taken that, right? So there are situations where, like, you're not, these people are not trying to cheat, right? That's one of the biggest things that I like to, there's, there's situations where they are. I feel like 90% of sloughing is honest people making mistakes or people thinking they hit someone and they did, right? So, all right. Yes, active breathing. Okay. <laughs> so, that's our lead up to the fight. Now we're going to start getting into the fight um, and what's going on. First thing we talk about is active reaving, right? This is super important. Too often, reaves pick their place to stand <coughs> and they just watch a fight happen, right? <laughs> and they do their best to call from them. We've all seen it. Right? It's not only have we all seen it, we probably all see it more than we see something different. Right? Right there, right? Yep. We're going to fight, right? Yep. We're going to rotate. Now, how can she see anything? Right. Right? Now, way. you can see this shoulder, but what if it throws down here and it drops? Right, I can't Did see it. it at all. Right, exactly. So we <laughs> need to make sure that we're moving at all times. Now, maintaining line of sight of those critical areas. Right. Assuming that you only have two reeves, which is kind of at least an ant guard standard, where should those two reeves be? On either side of the two fighters, so Wait, not at your back. Do you mean total or in a ring? In, in a, a ring. ring. Oh, okay, yeah. For like <laughs> He's like, that's like my ant guard standard is you have two reeves and you set this. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and there are some tournaments that are like that. The Hammer of God tournament is one reef per ring. Yeah, and until, 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 until the semifinal. Until the semifinal. The, the tens of the first part getting into the bracket. Right. Some of those guys fight and they don't even use a reef. The <laughs> reef is just happens to be there in case you want them. Right. Yeah. So, right. Basically, if you have two reefs, 
like you said, on either side, basically centered on either side, or you can possibly, if it's two shield men, you can possibly sit a little bit to the back side of the shield, just a little bit. So I'm not, you know, if I'm on his side and this is his shield, I'm not gonna sit here, but here's not a bad thing because it gives me a little bit better angle for the behind the shield shot, which is some one of the ones that's a little hard to tell, mm -hmm. right? And I and still have a good angle out. behind his shield as well because it's going to be open and deep, right? But from the most part, so on their side is where you want to be. Now where that changes is when you get into one reeve, right? If you were a single reeve. Um, if you were fighting a righty on a righty, then you are probably going to just try to sit centered, all right, on one side and hope you can do it. One thing that I like to do is because you're going to be far out, right? I'm sitting out here. If we're rotating like this, right, it's sometimes hard to be running around, right? You try to feel that sometimes, and if you're right here and we're circling and you see a circle hard, instead just go that way. Just go the other side. Right, and try to stay on the side. Where this is going to change is if it's righty on lefty, okay? <laughs> righty on lefty, where do we want to stand? On their sword sides. Always on their sword side. Probably 80% of the action that is going to occur is going to be here, and if you are on this side, it is going to be behind a shield. <laughs> right? Or the body for that. Right, or the body, right. Yeah. So you've got this wall sitting right here, and we're fighting everything right here. So it is super important, righty <laughs> versus lefty, that you always have someone on this side. On top of this, when you are dealing with one stronger reef and one weaker reef, we'll talk about coaching your other reef, right, uh, a little bit. But if you know you're the stronger reef, try to stay to the sword side, right? Okay. All right. In fact, we can just go into coaching your other reef right now. So a lot of times with your other reef, if you are the strong one, right, you are the person, very much like your fighter, talk to them about expectations early on, right? Tell them, I'm going to stay on this side, I need you to stay on this side. If you have specific things like, hey, I really, from this side, I'm going to struggle to see what's hitting under the board over there, so I need you to really focus on what's going under the board over there. Like, I feel pretty confident that from this angle, I can catch most of the other stuff. That shot's going to be difficult let them know so that they have less to worry about. Because if they're trying to see everything, they're less, much less likely to actually catch it. So try to get them focused on that. Another thing that you need to understand is especially with inexperienced Reeves, they are going to struggle to step up and make calls, right? So sometimes, say it's that under the board shot that you can't really see. It's important for you to say, hey, that shot under the board looked like it got up kind of high. Did you see if it got up high enough? Talking directly to your other reef, right? Say, that one of the important parts about this psychology is not saying like, hey, that hit over there, because a lot of times people are gonna be a little uncomfortable saying yes or no, right? If it looked high, like it might have been high enough to you, if you say, hey, that looked like it might have been high enough, could you tell? they're a little more likely to be comfortable saying yes or no, right? Because you've made the assertion already, mm -hmm. so they're not making a, they're not doing they're not anything. Making, you're, not, you're not influencing what yeah. they saw. Right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not say, making a decision, they're just agreeing with you yes or no. That was high and it hit. What did you see? You're automatically, even if, because they might not have even saw, but you're automatically telling them that it happened, so they right. will see something that might have not happened. Right, you don't want to do that. That's the other side of things. So you don't want to do that, as well as you don't want to say, I couldn't see it, what'd you see? Now, sometimes you have to say that, right? right. I'm not telling you to lie and say anything that you didn't. If you couldn't see it, then you have to trust them, and if they say they didn't see it, that's fine. But if you think something might have been high enough, sometimes communicating that, that to them will free them up to feel more comfortable about making a call one way or the other because you're the one who's broached the subject, uh -huh. right? So that's the little bit that I've got on uh, coaching your other reeve. And remember, like the rule book protects reeves. 
in the rule book, it says no matter what the rule is, the Reeves call is final. Right. Period. I mean, if you make a bad call, that's not something you want to do, but it is still your call to make. Mm -hmm. Which is a perfect segue into making bad calls. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <coughs> so, I like to look at tournament, tournament reeving very much like any other sport, right? And I think it's what we do wrong, is that our reeves are not like any other sport. In any other sport, reeves make all the calls, right? It's not, it, there's there's no, you know, We don't ask the ball players if they got the first down. We don't yeah, ask yeah, yeah, yeah. the... Like, you don't ask the defense, hey, do you think he crossed that line? Yeah. yeah. Right? You, you, don't, you don't ask the player if they fumbled. Right. Exactly. <laughs> now, think that was a fumble? Like, I feel like it was a fumble. Now, sportsmanship. <laughs> what did you see? Yeah, 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 exactly. Sportsmanship, luckily, is a huge part of our game. It's a part of football. It's not the word I'm looking for. Like, honor-based calling, right, is not a part of any other sport. It's a huge part of our game, and it's a benefit to our game. It's a great part of our game. But when things are all riding on the line, you need to understand that our Reeves need to be stepping up and taking control and being an authority figure, right? They need to be making the calls. We need to be treating it more like a sport because that is the most, most sport-like thing that we do, right? So, like any other sport, you are going to miss calls and you're going to make bad calls, all right? Here's what I gotta say about it, right? So first of all, it is way more important to make a bad call than to think you saw something and not make the call. If you think you saw something, but are saying, I, I can't tell you how many times I see a Reeve go like, I thought it hit him in the arm, but I guess not. My words to them, if I'm being rude, is then sit down and let me get someone else up here because you only have one job, right? <laughs> That's my like rude words for it, but basically a lot of it has to do with being insecure about making a call, and I understand that, right? But you have to understand that that is what you have to do up there, and sometimes it's going to fall on you that you've made a bad call. Sometimes you're gonna have to deal with people unhappy with you. These are very high stress situations with people who are very competitive working on things. It's not always gonna go smoothly, it's something we're going to have to deal with. Have you made a bad call? Yeah. Yeah. Made plenty of bad calls. Right. Um, and so that kind of moves. By far, our good calls outweigh our bad calls. <laughs> <laughs> I like to believe it. <laughs> it, it, it just, if you're making all bad calls, there's a problem, and you definitely need to sit down. And you want to you want to move on after the call, whether you whether it was good or bad, you want to move on after that and go on to the next one and not think about that either. You have to, the next fight is completely over. You, you have, you Normally if it's a bad call, you're not going to figure that out yeah. until yeah. days no, I later. Mean, you don't want to sit and dwell on it and contemplate it yeah. and let that affect the next call. Like, well, it looked like it hit on the last one. I didn't say anything. Right. You talked about having a stronger Reeve and then maybe somebody else who, who's just less strong or less confident? Yes. Is it important in situations that there might be calls that there's a primary read that's going to make the final decision? And, you know, again, back to the sports analogy, there's line judges and there's referees, right, who makes the final call. Right. So I think that, or? I think that there's probably some merit to it. Yeah. But we would have to change what we currently do to yeah. make that happen. So I wouldn't necessarily teach y'all you need to be the head ref yeah. or something because it's not what we always already yeah, gotcha. do. We're not, we're not set up for that as a society yet. But as a system, I like the idea of having a head ref. Um, what about when the Reeves don't agree? I guess that's really what, I, what I'm getting at is how do you resolve when the Reeves don't agree if you don't have a I'm the Reeves? It, it depends on the situation and you have to go situation by situation. If I say I think that hit him he said it, it like you know. Player says that didn't hit me, and I say no. I saw that hit you, and he goes, no, I had an angle. It was a block. Then I should be willing to say, okay, I understand and back up, mm -hmm. right? If instead it's like, you know, it has to be worked out between the reads, and that's what it comes down to. And right. you need to do it with as least bias as possible, and, and the most honest result that you can see happen. Right. Right? I would tell you more often than not, I do not like 
let's refight it. But there are situations, if both refs can't come to an agreement and the players can't come to an agreement, that you sit back and you have to say, let's fight or refight it, mm -hmm. right? I often think let's refight it is a cop-out to not wanting to stand by your guns and say, no, I saw you get hit. You know, you go like, I saw you get hit, and the player's like, I thought I hit him, and then he was like, no, I caught that and I hit him, and then it's like, well, I really thought it, and he goes, you want to just refight it? And I'm like, yeah, let's refight it. Whoa, the other guy won, and we just took away his win and tried to refight it. It feels good for you because you got something. It feels good for the player because he just went from a loss to refighting it, but the other guy who really thought he won and you really thought he won as the Reeve, just got his win taken away and you're refighting it, right? So I think refight is a trap that a lot of Reeves fall into that we want to avoid unless there's just truly a situation where the Reeves can't get it, you couldn't see what happened at all, the players couldn't get on it. There come situations where it's just like, Let's refight it, guys. Like, there's no easy way to solve this. There's no clear solution. And it shouldn't be a common thing. If you have two reads that are disagreeing over shots, there's probably something else going on. Right, and that's probably where we might need to be coaching more reads, or we need better coaching for the reads. Um, it's going to be a situation that comes on every now and then, right? We're a very new group when it comes to turning reading in any serious capacity at all, right? There's going to be situations you come across where you can't agree. Right. Uh, so we're going to go with some dealing with confrontation. Okay. <laughs> so I got s some different stuff about this. First of all, there is a belief that basically the us fighting. Right. We get done. You make a you make a call, and I go like, "What? No, it didn't hit me in the waist. Like it hit me dead here in the leg." Right. There's this kind of belief that that's wrong, right? That I shouldn't be saying that. And while in a perfect world, there's some truth to that, there is no sport where when someone has a call made on them, there's not someone going like, what do you mean, ref? I didn't do that. Because I think it's unreasonable to expect that people in these high stress situations with huge amounts on the line to just take a call, which by the way, we already discussed, you might be wrong. It may really have hit me in the leg, right? And I am now losing an important fight to me because of your bad call. So I think it is understandable that there will be conflict from time to time. As much as you would like to be able to say, well, the Reeve said something, that's always the case. It's not actually tenable, right? It's not realistic in any way. These are high stress situations. And yeah, you may have made a call, uh, uh, the correct call. He may think it was the wrong call. He may actively be sloughing you or you might actually have the wrong call in all situations. Well, except for the him actually sloughing you in two of the three situations, uh, I think it's completely reasonable that he would say, no, that didn't happen, right? And that's why de-escalating the situation becomes such a big deal. Too many times I see, basically, I tell him, no it didn't, it hit me right here. F you, you sluffer, why are you saying that? Right, exactly, and he comes at me like, no, you got hit. Like, don't you try to cheat. Like, I, I caught it, you, you're trying to cheat me now, and now I'm like, no it didn't, it hit me right there, right? Like, no, I'm done, and now I'm we so suddenly- tired. Yeah, yeah exactly. freaking ring if you're going to play like that. Exactly. Now he's coming at it from this, like, no, I am the authority. I told you what happened. You want to cheat, you get out of here. And once again, I'm like, I didn't even cheat. Like, how are you even freaking saying this? And now we're starting to get heated, mm -hmm. right? I don't, the, I hate that, right? I hate when a Reeve meets someone saying that they did wrong by going, no, I didn't. Like, it shouldn't happen like that, right? A Reeve needs to understand, first of all, that they are fallible. That they are trying to do a service to this game and to these fighters, but these fighters are also going to be extremely like high adrenaline moments. A lot is riding on this and it is very meaningful for them. So sometimes just the idea of getting hit in the hip means they lost and they're gonna be upset and, and looking for something because it's just human nature, right? 
So instead of talking about like, well, this is what we need to do, or you know, like, ah, you know, no, you're out of here. I'm very big on de-escalating the situation, right? One of my go-to phrases in this is going to be things like, I say that hit you in the hip. It didn't hit me in the hip. What are you talking about? Like, so I apologize if it didn't hit you in the hip. That's what I saw it hit, and I'm the Reeves, so I have to call it. I apologize if it was a bad call. <laughs> and then he walks off, right? And that's really how it goes. It's not like I have, I have never had someone step up after that, right? After I say, because guess what? I'm telling the truth. I'm pretty certain he got hit in the hip, but I could be wrong. I've definitely seen video afterwards or had someone come up to me afterwards. He was like, dude, I was standing right behind him. It didn't get to his shoulder. And I'm like, really? He like, I was sure it hit him in the shoulder. But I have to make that call. It changes from from a missed call, or maybe he was mistaken and he actually got hit in the hip, or you made a missed call, it changes the, the atmosphere and the, the, um, um, the results completely when you say, you're a cheater, stop cheating, and everybody hears you say, you're a cheater, stop cheating, and then this guy, oh, I was at the tournament, and yeah, he was fucking cheating, and they didn't, they wasn't even watching the fucking fight. But yeah. now this guy goes and he tells his bros, yeah, he was trying to slough. Well, that's and a horrible that stigma a to cheater. put some on somebody yeah, right, yeah, when they're yeah. not doing it. Yeah, right. right. Not, and I, I think the biggest part of the, of the de-escalating is basically allowing, taking responsibility for your call, right? Taking acceptance that you are making a call, knowing that you're human, you might have messed it up, but you think, no, I saw you get hit. I think it hit, and I got to call that, right? Because now you've given him leeway to not be a cheater. You just made a bad call. And people are much quicker to accept that I'm, I made the mistake than they made the mistake, right? So that's an important part in pretty much any de-escalating situation. Yes, ma'am. So kind of building off of that, and you may be getting to this later, um, what if a fighter, like, what if you you made the calls you think are good, you expressed that. Now fighters are like, well, don't get in Rel's ring. She's gonna call X and such as being hit you, every time. You have to brush that off. You do. That there's nothing, you can't stop that person from saying that. If people feel like there's a bad call, you have to, that's the pressure that you take, so, right? Yeah, and after the situation, you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. You can have you can you can talk to someone else. Like you can go to Gold Press. Are you king right now? I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, you can go to Gold Press anyway. You know, <laughs> <laughs> king of our hearts. Right. And talk to him and say like, Hey, I may have made a bad call. I was trying my best, but they like you know they're saying all this stuff. And you can have a conversation with them about like, you know, these people are doing the best they can. Like. It may have been a bad call, but we don't want to go back and do this. It's not a malicious thing. You know, we can talk about them after the fact, but during the tournament, you really need to brush it off. There's not a real good answer yeah. other than that. Yeah, you just have to just let it go. And there's a difference between someone complaining to their friend, maybe loudly, mm -hmm. and saying, you're shit brief, or something like that. Now we're talking about a different situation, right? Where if they're becoming that combative, then I might give them one chance and say like, hey, you need to calm down and go ahead and head to the back of the line, please. And then if they want to continue doing it, then I would look at removing them from the tournament. And if they want to continue, what? And you can definitely the talk game. to the person running the tournament and go, look, this guy is being abusive to the Reeves. Because right. no one should be belligerent to you. I mean, you're there doing a service. You are working for them. You are working for the, You're working for everybody. And if one guy is going to be belligerent to you like that, they might need to be removed. Right. Right? But to say that they can't blow off steam and say, oh, that sucked, don't be in her ring, like, fuck them. But if they're just like, get out of her ring, she's going to cheat you, <laughs> like, constantly, they got to go. Right. Because that's not good for anybody. Right. Nobody. That, that doesn't do a service for any other fighter, and it disservices some fighters. Yeah. So I think that's really important. Like, I, I talk about de-escalating a situation. You should de-escalate the situation, but there will be times when something has to happen. Thankfully, that's very rare, right? If you don't meet them with their aggression with aggression, very often it's like two sentences and they go, and that's it. It's done, right? Because we didn't meet aggression with aggression. We just basically went like, 
sorry, man, I'm just doing my job. I apologize if I made a bad call, but that's, I mean, it's what I saw, so the call stands. And right. it's not like we're doing this for strangers either. Right. Pretty much we're even the same people tournament after tournament after tournament. Right? Mm -hmm. So everyone should be able to recognize that. And it shouldn't be to such aggression that it's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. You can, uh, you can talk to them after the fact, at the end exactly. of the day, or whatever the case is. If you're uncomfortable with what happened or you're worried about it, you can talk to them and like, hey, look, you know, if I was wrong, I apologize, but that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that'll help a lot of it. And uh, along those lines, we aren't grieving strangers, right? We have previous relationships with a lot of them. We might actually be in a romantic relationship with someone in the tournament. We've got plenty of like things that can happen. If you have the ability and you know that you might be in a, like, you know, if your boyfriend is fighting in a tournament, right? And Babe, you. If your boyfriend is fighting in a tournament. It's hard when you're with me and all the guys want you. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if your boyfriend's fighting in a tournament and it's getting to the semifinals, if you have Reeves, it might be a good idea to put another Reeve in. Not even because. I mean, there's two reasons for it. Even if you're going to make the right calls, the other person, the other fighter, might feel a little uncomfortable with you making a call against them, mm -hmm. right? And we've already talked, it's a high-stress situation. Sometimes people are looking for an excuse to blow off steam because they have frustration and they need to do something, right? And then also, missing a call or making a bad call on your boyfriend or your girlfriend can also cause problems that you don't really want to have in your head <laughs> when you're making that call. Like, oh, I'm about to have to call him a sluffer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're a <laughs> cheater. Yeah, like, yeah, like, 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 yeah. Right. At the yeah. very least, there's, should, if there's not an option, you should ask both fighters if you're yeah. comfortable with it. And, and I've <laughs> should, done that, too. You should avoid it if when, at all possible. When uh, Reeve and the Hammer got turning, any time there was just car in the ring, I always ask, or my squires were in the ring, are you okay with me reaving? If not, I'll get you to a different field. Nine times out of ten, they're like, we're good. Yeah. All right. Um, the last thing we like to talk, I want to talk about before we kind of move into some role play and some different things. We're going to do some little bit of practice reaving, then we're going to practice with different situations. Uh, dealing with them is basically opponent interaction, right? How the opponents are interacting and when you have to deal stuff, or deal with stuff. One of the most common ones that, that come across is basically if I say, Chain, you got hit in the hip. He says, no, you didn't. Like, no, I, I saw you get hit in the hip, right? And then I'm Shane's opponent. And Shane goes. Did you did, do you feel like you hit me in the hip? I, I, I thought I got like, it there. I think it was it was crazy. Wasn't it crazy? Well, I I, I mean, I guess we can refight. Okay, let's do that. Right. A lot Good of jobs. <laughs> <laughs> it is a common thing where if I'm not getting anywhere with the reef, I will instead turn and basically make a plea to my opponent. I failed plea <laughs> one, now I'm trying plea two. Right? Now, there's a difference between me saying... Uh, the Reeve saying, Shane, you're dead. And me going, no, no, I didn't hit him, he got that block. Right? Now we're good, right? Now, I would accept that, like, okay, I'm comfortable with that. The player who I just called as a winner turned to me and said, I did not actually get that. Let us continue fighting. I'm okay with that call. However, the player I just called dead turning to his opponent saying, I don't think you hit me. You want to refight it. Now he's making a plea to see if his opponent is a nice enough guy or doesn't want to deal with uh, the stigma of being called. Yeah. <laughs> so non there we go. Yeah. Take a win. To avoid confrontation mm -hmm. is saying, no, we can just fight it again, right? No, you can't. <laughs> I made a call. I saw you get hit in the hip. Thank you for being a nice guy and trying to do this, but it's my call, it's my responsibility, so this lays on me, right? Um, also, you have to deal with 
some of the, some of the worst things that you can deal with from time to time is instead issues where your opponent are starting to get into it, right? Getting heated, calling the other one a, a cheater, <laughs> right? Like you know that hit you. You know that hit you. But you never hit me with that shot in your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> These are the situations where you need to be able to take control, have people maybe back up, reset, right? Reset, and talk to them and say like, this needs to stop, all right? <coughs> I understand that y'all are heated, don't get into it, this is my calls, all right? Let's finish this fight and be clean, right? Obviously, if someone gets too heated, starts getting pushy, we have to deal with something else. That's when we're talking about moving from a tournament or doing something in the game as a whole. Thankfully, that almost never happens as long as you are making sure that you're keeping control and de-escalating the situation. I'm just going to see over and over again that I'm going to say de-escalate de the situation, right? Because that's generally all it takes. Just don't meet them with aggression. Yeah. Right? Step them back. Just talk them down. Be like, hey, if, if you know, work it out. Yes, ma'am. So you're saying in that case, you're talking to us as in us working to de-escalate it, not necessarily saying like if you guys were going at it, hey guys, can we de-escalate this a little bit here? Correct. It, it is on the reeve to control that situation. Right. That, that is your space. Yes. So these guys are already heated. They're not going to cool themselves mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and let, they're very rarely going to cool themselves down once they've gotten that heated. Right. You right? need to, uh, De-escalate it, and especially if the the guy you think didn't take the shot mm -hmm. is, is bringing this up, and the other guy saying you're cheating. You also need to be careful as to Reeve to not look like you're taking sides with one or the other and de-escalate it. If, if you that. separate them, and then you go talk with one, and the other Reeve go talk with the other, and then swap, and then mm -hmm. talk to the other Reeve, and and make it look fair. Give them time to cool down. Right. You know, because you've separated them. You've given their room to vent, but they're venting towards someone they're not angry at. Right? They're, I, I'm angry at him. I'm not angry. Tell me what's wrong. Okay? What, what are you upset about? What, it, you think, you feel like it hit. Okay. You know, you know, tell me, give me your grievances. And a lot of people just want to vent. Mm -hmm. And if they vent to some of the person they're not mad at, they'll calm down. And then you can get it going back. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> That's the lecture portion of our class. <laughs> now we're going to move on to some... Basically, Shane and I are going to fight some, and we're going to have people actually read us. Yeah. And you're going to be making the calls, yeah. right? Y'all going to slow it down to like 50%? <laughs> I wasn't planning on maybe maybe 80%. <laughs> right? we'll, we'll slow it down a little bit because, again, we're going to put out situations that we want you to deal with. Some of, the, some of these are going to be just normal fights, mm -hmm. and you need to make the call. Sometimes something's going to happen in the fight, mm -hmm. and you're going to need to make the call there, right? So, and, and everyone's going to get to stand up, so I don't think anyone gets to hide in the background. Crazy. Right. <laughs> All right. But we're going to step back and come up with our scenario, so we'll take our first volunteer. First volunteer, anyone? <laughs> hey, while they're doing that, for all y'all that's actually here that aren't fighting in tournaments very often and you're literally here because you actually read, we appreciate it. Thanks, babe. It, uh, it's really hard to make it to these <laughs> events to fight in the tournament. <laughs> Imagine doing it so I can go work. So, it's a <laughs> All right, tap. Back up. Lay on. trying to find my sword. Okay, but you didn't call posting either. Well, I'm dead. Hmm? I lost, though. Oh, you lost. Okay, sorry. 
I didn't understand the outcome of that either. <laughs> okay, so what happened in that fight? <laughs> Okay, tell us what happened in that fight. Anyone? Raise your hand. So, before you dropped the sword, did something happen here? On that side. What? To on who? who? <laughs> <laughs> See, now, now it's recorded, so now I'm yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, what is, But tell us what you, you saw. You it side. doesn't yeah. matter. Okay. Tell us what you saw. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Your first hit. Before you dropped the sword, it almost looked like you got here and then you dropped it. Something like that. So okay. I like at that point like I was like, oh you can drop whatever you want, the fight's over. Well what I saw was he hit Brett in the leg, Brett hit Tugan in the arm, Tugan switched, Brett dropped his sword and then Tugan hit Brett again. Correct? Was that is that your call? <laughs> that's, that's my call. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I dig it. Where'd I hit you, too? <laughs> you hit me in the arm. I did hit him in the okay. arm, and then he killed me after. Okay. <laughs> right? Right, okay. So, what I would tell you is, when I had dropped my sword, he unquestionably killed me. Oh. Right? You were worried about whether or not I dropped a post. You were trying to talk me through that. And I don't mind that you were trying to talk me through that, except for, there was unquestionably, no matter what I decided, I lost that fight when he killed me. Yeah. Right? So the sequence didn't matter as right. long as I wasn't dead and he was dead. Right. Right. Yeah. So instead of walking me through and trying to figure out everything that happens in a situation where you know no matter what it was I lost, right. just call it and step us back. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because yeah. the series oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter and you don't want to talk somebody right. into a loss right. when you already know it's a loss. Right. I wasn't getting the outcome of the fight before I was trying to Correct. decipher what happened. So right. It didn't matter in the end anyway. Yeah. The only reason why you would talk him through that is if you thought a a situation over here would have changed what happened. Gotcha. Right? If I would have been dead before that last part of the fight. Right. Right? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Want to get someone new? Yeah, that was beautiful. I know. We didn't even plan on that one. <laughs> there was going that first time around when you spun around. I didn't know if he hit your back or if he hit your shield. I couldn't tell on that second match. It sounded like shield. It sounded like shield. <laughs> it sounded like shield. That's a good that's thing. That's, that's what I was going off of. Step back. Yeah. on the arm, you continue to swing and he took it, but it was it was late and then he swung again. Well I think it was on time. Hmm? It was on time, wasn't it? Afraid not. Alright. <laughs> Good call. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Back up. Lay on. his leg? No, he didn't. He did hit me directly in the back. I didn't see him. I'm sorry. <laughs> he did stab me in the arm, too. <laughs> <laughs> when I did this, yeah, he hit yeah. me dead in the shoulder. Yeah. I just said that I got the block and kept going. Right. Yep. I, I, I saw the swing and I saw the block there. I wasn't honestly sure if it hit or not. But then after the fact, you gotta, you gotta say something. Then he hit that at the time. Leg. Honestly, honestly, I will never if you really aren't that sure, and I think that was pretty good acting. <laughs> myself, there are times that you can't make that call, yeah. but just be a little careful of that because I don't think that it came anywhere close to blocking it. He hit right. like yeah. this right. entire oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the issue is if you're in the middle of an engagement, I'm not sure if it hit. I'm fucking the fight up completely. If I'm like, did that hit? Uh, that's not my sure if you're not sure, you <laughs> know what I mean? there's some truth. And it, in some, some respects of that, but right when we backed up after that engagement and we reset, that would have been stop yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Because, because at this point, because we did just go like boom, boom, you're throw, you're and then we step back, and then I we went back yeah. in. There was a plenty of time for you to stop at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah I, 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 was, I was watching that, and I saw the block. But to me, it didn't look pretty good. <laughs> did, did you hear it? Because the difference between that yeah. and 
that. Yeah, well, it, his his the blade was on the back when when you when you when the shot was thrown. I, but yeah, I, yeah, but yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's hard. I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm here. We're just giving you some advice. We're giving you some advice. We're giving you some advice. We're giving you some We're giving you some advice. We're giving you some advice. That's why we, uh, we can talk theory all day long, and this is why we say you have to practice this skill. This is not something you can right, say, I'm going to do this. We got right? fights. We, it's going to be a long day of fights. We need y'all to fight again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's all right, get guy. <laughs> New peas and everything. Do you prefer sponge Do you prefer it like a reef standing here or on that side so y'all can see better? No, you you do you. You this is your. I stand over here because it's this, in the shade. This is yeah, yeah, we're supposed to stand in the shade. This is your example. It's also easier to read if you're not blinded by the sun. That's true. My immediate thought was the crowd is on this side, so I'm gonna go stand on that side so that. You know, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The crowd that, that can be like, hey. While they're off, you know, telling lies. Over that. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was letting you guys check out my back. <laughs> so they were pretty back. So we got the footage of Brett saying bro. no, but he's hitting me in the back, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so we can edit that out of context now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Set back. All right. Being a read is not easy. Yeah, and my shoulder. <laughs> a long That's time okay. ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, that one, you should have called up. Okay. Because that was complete cheater. Okay. <laughs> Fucking cheater. Don't think we're going to be 100% honest. No, we I, want I, you to make these calls. I know. That's why I'm here. Play 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 Yeah. 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 Arm, but he tried to bash me. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> did y'all just reset that? Me at all. Did y'all just reset that fight, or did we decide the arm was no good because he kind of bashed you? We decided the arm was no good, so we kind of because he kind of bashed me. Then you're still legged. Oh, smart. <laughs> 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 smart. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Don't let us necessarily yeah. lead these fights. Okay. It is your job. If you see something, you see these rules. And we're going to purposely quit. make this uncomfortable. No, I know. The first time whenever you were talking about the shoulder, I thought I saw shield. That's why I didn't call it. Is I thought I saw a future shield. Okay. And, and that'll happen so, sometimes. You're going to, like, you, you'll miss something. We're going to tell you afterwards what you missed, just to give you an idea. Because I bet there's going to be times where you're like, I thought something might have been that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. That's why. I genuinely thought you hit a shield. That's why yeah. I called. But at the same time, afterwards, whenever you're wailing on him, I'm like, whatever happened, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, in that respect. But, yeah, this was this was right over here. Okay. Yeah, no, I did I miss that. Let's get another one. Who hasn't done it yet? Awesome. <clears throat> Reset. 
so. <laughs> you two made eye contact. Like, Mom, <laughs> moment I said it. on right here. Really? Like you're gonna let him get away with that? Mm -hmm. Did you see the cheese? You saw him get hit in the hip. I did see the hip, but it did look a bit deep on me. Um, I mean that's pretty deep. It's a, it's a weird angle, but I did see it connect around, so I'm gonna call it a sign. Okay. Right, step back. <laughs> So then what are we at? What's the score here? Are you guys going to a score or are you just continuing? I don't know, Mr. Reed. 4-0. Sorry, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. I'm cheating better than that. <laughs> I'm cheating. <laughs> Alright, next person? Yep. Hey. Glad we both saw that one. <laughs> Tap and lay on, you say. <laughs> <laughs> one Deal. <and> or both. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I need. You gotta come in. A little bit more. Yeah. Don't, don't like. He was, he was letting them discuss back and forth with yeah. each other. Yeah. You just gotta be the great. I'm making the pick off. Because it ended peacefully that time, but that might not always be the case. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're intentionally like messing with each other. Yeah. Are you tap sword? Or you tap back? Lay on. Yeah, it did, but you got me in the head first. Well, you kept fighting. I, you clearly didn't. It looked like you hit him in the head. So, I'm calling that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the point of this exercise. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> he actually didn't hit me in the middle. I know. <laughs> he missed my head, hit me in the middle of the spine. <laughs> he was supposed to hit me in the head. Too honorable. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. We're bad at our fake fighting, all right? He clearly didn't hit you in the head, and you're trying to cheat. <laughs> Don't worry, you got plenty of time I'm sorry. here. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually really good. Hunting to show gold. But, so you saw a hit. Yeah, that's what I saw. Okay. I mean, he did, he did hit me in the hip. You know he hit you. Like, honestly, honestly. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not a I don't know. Adam <laughs> Bain would also tell the truth. <laughs> well, we've been role playing this enough. <laughs> I need to actually. Yes. I definitely hit his shield, expecting to get hit in the head. He hit me directly in the middle of the spine. <laughs> I kind of pivoted off your head. I didn't even feel it touch. You may have touched some ponytail. Yeah, I did a little bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there would actually be LARPing parts of it. <laughs> well, we're bad at it. So sorry. <laughs> but we still get some gold out of it. All right. So, it's all on camera. <laughs> Tap or step back. Play on. I didn't see parts of this getting cut out. Look at this. <laughs> right. Like. Oh. I feel like he kind of bashed me on that one for sure, though. Oh, it shot me over. Well, you bent over and kept leaning back. I just took up that space. And then gave me a little push. Well, you pushed at me. I. You mean I tried not to fall over? Uh, you're the one to lean back. Shouldn't we redo it? No. <laughs> you're, letting, you're letting the fighters dictate the revamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's it called, bro? 
Plus, I think I got him in the arm and I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> if he bashed you, then we can stop the fight due to the bashing, but you can't take the bashing in and then swing and take the swing too. <laughs> well, I'm, say, I'm saying either point. way. It's either he bashed me over and we reset this, and if you don't, then at least call the arm shot so he didn't kill me with while I was on the ground. You're gonna let him tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it's your ring. Yeah. Yeah. It's your ring. So if, if, if we're going to be like this, also right? The audience participate. All you have to do <laughs> is go, hold on. Yep. Stop us from doing that. And then you make the decision, even if it takes you a second to figure it out, don't let us keep influencing you. That's not going to help. And make sure you realize we're purposely giving you situations that there's not a clear win. Right? <laughs> make the decision. I think it's also a little more difficult and what uh, I made what I am noticing here is that a lot of people are probably still looking at you guys as the instructors. When they are in those fights, they're no longer the instructor in that in that case. Like they are intending to be fighters Correct. that are going to. Which try is why I did the out of bounds and what. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so like, as soon as you guys start doing that back and forth, they're looking at you like, oh, these are the instructors, and then it's like, no, you have to remember that these are their role playing fighters that are going to be intentionally doing yeah. weird shit. We've been planning this out for a whole like forty minutes. Yeah. yeah. I would clarify that in between each fight because parts of these videos are getting cut up and y'all are cheating. <laughs> 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 we are. This is a tournament right here. We got. To so what? Give me a call. Probably would totally step back after the match. Okay. Are you resetting the fight and starting from the beginning? Uh. No. All right. I'm comfortable with that as the. That's the reason for it. I mean, <laughs> physical content. I can tell you that honestly, if we want to talk about what actually happened there, he stepped in a little bit more that was comfortable. He really never put much of a bash on me. A little bit of a touching rub, and I went over because I needed to make space to hit him. That was about the most borderline you can get to legal and not legal in there, so it was a very difficult situation. <laughs> he was making contact with me, and he's not really actively pushing me. So. But it was, well, I think he made it. You played it up a little bit like I was pushing. Yeah, exactly. You pushed off of me. <laughs> I did push off that direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. His acting is way better than mine, I'd like to point out. <laughs> Should we give him an Emmy? <laughs> head. Oh. Shoulder, but head first. Right here in this eyeball area. Yeah, but then you threw that. Okay. I, I think his was light, correct? Yeah, the first shot was like the second one. <laughs> it may have been direct, though. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I don't read. Like, I don't know. That's why you're here. You let him lead you. And that's that's yeah. what we want to avoid, right? Yeah. Make that call without me. I'm yes. gonna try to influence you. Yeah. He's gonna try and to he did. You. That literally was like within a split second of each other. Oh, you guys you guys have about twenty minutes? Instructor cards will be three o'clock and below. Okay. Sounds good, thank you. So anyway. This is, I mean, this is exactly what this lesson is, right? Because, yeah, it was tight in there. Could have been either way. It was pretty much dead simultaneous. But just by looking confident and saying, I'm pretty sure I hit first, you kind of felt like, yeah, I think he's right. Yeah. Right? And that's what we're going to try to avoid. All right? I will say this much is kind of like tunnel vision <clears throat> right here. While standing there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look right, and then when someone here. It's possible. Maybe we'll have, a, like have you back up, a, uh, people back up. Okay. Something, we can move something out that happened that didn't, that probably should have been, you got hit in the head, and then instead of, like, are you okay, lay on, the fight just continued without checking to make sure you was actually okay. You could, your vision could be blurry, and you might not actually Well, you don't have to, to do no, that check. You can see that. Yeah. 
And honestly, no, I'm was, not saying your eyes fucking hanging out, but you could be water. You might not have been ready to continue to proceed, but then felt obligated to because he's here ready. I feel like that's, that's a fighter's the fighter. call. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, look here, damn it. We're talking about <laughs> taking the fuck over. We are, and, and, and we we've right tried right to right. simulate this, but we keep failing because we suck at it. Yeah, I know. Right? There is a difference between if he plows me in the face and I go, oh. Mm. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> right? And there is a difference if he plows me in the face, and, we keep, and I keep fighting like it yeah. never even stopped me. Right. I tried to do that that time, but then I played it up as I died, <laughs> and then I was like, well, I played it up kind of quick. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of reasonable that you didn't see it, because it was like head, and I was like, yeah. shot, shot. Oh, my head. <laughs> <laughs> So I may, I may have acted it a little too quickly. Yeah, there are those two very different scenarios, and they're probably a little bit more grayer than that, but I've generally been able to tell, I feel, with a high percentage of accuracy, if someone has been dazed from a headshot. If you see them actively attacking, actively blocking, if it's just a passive block and they're standing there, Right. They could be days. If we see an if you see an attack with their head pulled back, mm -hmm. like that, I think that's reasonable to say that they're dazed, right? Even if they're continuing attacking. At that point mm -hmm. you want to reset both things though. Yeah. Right? You can't yeah. take his shots, but if he loses it, we'll call him dazed. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's definitely a little bit of playing it up or learning to do it right that you need to do. But uh, keep that in mind that Headshot does not stop the fight, unless the person is dazed or the fighter in some way gains an advantage from that strike. Right. Now your rules. Yep. <laughs> Regardless of what a ant guard thread just had a whole bunch of talking about, the rules are the rules. <laughs> I, you will learn that I'm kind of a purist to the rules and when referees are like, well, I kind of prefer that just, no matter what, we always do it this way. I'm, I'm like, to the rules. I kind of prefer you go by You're your rules. You're from Rise of the um, <laughs> No, I'm a Jessica. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And when we can send one person into a maze, we do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we got somebody else who hasn't done that yet. Too much shield contact there. He actually lost his balance over that. But I hit him in the chest. He came yeah. in. There was shield contact before that, so we're gonna reset. Okay. Please don't contact with shields anymore. It's half and back up. <clears throat> you see that? <laughs> I saw you throw a shot this way. Where did that land? What about him grabbing my shield? I did not see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You said no more shield contact, and then I did completely. I knew you were going to when I was looking for it, but I still didn't see yeah. it. <laughs> I walked up and went. I couldn't see the hand. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. It was, it was the first legal. fight was straight right up you back. <laughs> the second fight was legal shield manipulation. <laughs> yep. I was playing Dark Hunt for a minute. <laughs> do, you, do you let me keep going? Yeah, I'll do one more. Okay. Tap yeah. it back up. <clears throat> Lay on. Arm? Good. I got hit in the head, then I got hit in the arm, and 
this final one got hit hit me in the body, but I thought okay. I already killed him. The first one did look like head, but it was on the other side, so I couldn't tell. And your first shot that you threw over, where did that land over? Right here on the arm. See, because it was so close up, I couldn't actually tell, but that's where, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying he won? <clears throat> The second shot that you threw looked like it landed on your shoulder. Nothing hit my shoulder. My arm and my body got hit. Your body got hit? Yeah, but it's whether or not I hit him in the shoulder or not. I only threw one shot. It was straight down his back. I was knocked down my back. It was right there. At this point, because we usually play with two Reeves, I would ask my other <laughs> Reeves what they saw him What did you see? What did you see, other Reeves? I saw my phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, just like the other Reeves. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. If they was at the same time, I would at the very least say your arm, you got head, but any shot after you hit him in the head was no good, but his simultaneous shot to your arm is good. So your arm, it doesn't matter. Your arm, and he's uh, it does matter. <laughs> I'm going to need you guys not to argue with the reason. <laughs> not the best call, but I like the, I like the confidence. That's what I'm talking about. Own it. <laughs> All those terrible calls. I'm, I'm a fuck up. You guys know that already. <laughs> for for the sake of rehashing, right? Yes. I think I think you were actually able to do a very good job. It would have been better with if you hadn't had an extra read. Actually, all around, I think the last one was the only one that you missed any call. And, um, so you did very well. Where did I hit you? It was the arm. It was the arm. It was actually the arm. Okay. He took me in the ear. Right, and the ear may have even been my own sword. <laughs> Could have possibly hit me on the shoulder. But then it was an arm body. Really all that mattered was where did I hit him? And you kinda have to make that decision because everything after that was clearly just that. So that's what I like to say when you, like when when we look in, it was kinda like when you were trying to you were trying to talk about no. Sorry, you were talking about like, well, when did that leg happen? And it seems like you were doing it and it was like, No, I died. <laughs> That was yeah. like it doesn't matter when it happened. I right. died. So when those, just kind of remember that. The and only were you thing playing matters, days? No, I was not. Okay. I swung multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Right. The only thing that mattered. So to stop that on a headshot would not have been the right call. So. Yeah, I, I, we're still fighting. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I think you really. Well, I, I was just telling Bane as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a good job. So. All right. Next up. All right, guys. Good afternoon. We're gonna. Have some fun and be clean. Tap. Back up. And whenever you feel comfortable, lay on. First off, next word was off my ring. Second off, so how I saw this happen, he was coming in, you were here, pushed in. It looked like you had the most of the aggression, but I couldn't, because I was like, because you guys found really quickly, I was like basically right behind Brett at the time I was trying to come around, but by the time you were on the ground, I was still kind of right behind and couldn't see where exactly the aggression was. It did look like you leaned in, whether or not you leaned back, I couldn't say. Point is, that's really not okay, guys. <laughs> Um, God. Thanks. <laughs> I. You just tried to start a fight with me. I know, which is why I am not. I you know. You started the fight with me. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I don't like to, to call these fights, but I think in that instance, we had something heated, we had something thing, I got really flustered. I think the best okay, thing to do was to just this. tried to hurt. No, 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 let's uh, yeah, fight this. Let's do it. Yeah, we're going to do it. It's going to be fun. Oh, God. Okay. Ready? Okay, tap, back up, and within the amp guard legal rule book, let's lay on. It's all gonna be legal. Great, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, 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 okay, hey. So first off, you hit his head like three times, I saw those. Um, Don't count them. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I saw 
was right before your first head. You're gonna kick him out of the tournament now, or? <laughs> he just tried to fight me and then hit me in the head three times in a row. They just don't count. You know what, let's just refight it. No, 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 no. Let's just refight it. No, because you, you give me a second. I was about to say, I thought before the first time you hit you in the head, you might have actually gotten in here. But if you want to refight it, go ahead. Um, okay. Let's do it. No, it's not enough. <laughs> All right, so you're fl you're flustered. You're letting them. <laughs> I'm not flustered with my ring, actually. So um, I was going to cleanly call that shoulder before. All right, bye. Have fun not being in my tournament. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Take them out. <laughs> All right, we just wanted to. That was one of them that we had to do at some point. <laughs> we were running out of, of different options to do. You guys definitely picked the best, the best read to do that with. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I would tell you, I thought you did a real good job keep taking control, but you did get flustered at one point, yeah. and you were starting to escalate. I'm, I apologize. It's, it's okay. No, no, hey, no, this is like common yeah. like psychology is that like, we're upset, and now we're kind of talking about being upset with you, yeah. and you're trying to do this, you're already under stress, and you start getting upset, this is just what the all this is. The second when you said refight, we went, okay, <laughs> and you knew something was wrong, stop it. Yeah. Yes. The, the cameras being in front of you gives you the same exact feeling as you would have if you was actually yeah. grieving a high level of fight yeah. that mattered. <laughs> That's a good point. So this okay. is that. This was actually really, really good. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. you did a real good job, yeah. and then you just got a little flustered. Yeah. Right? You controlled it in the beginning wonderfully. Yeah. That was a super example of actually reaving a high-stress yeah. issue. Oh, yeah. well, we've seen this in a high-level tournament. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we, we promised we wouldn't say any names, but that was a specific example of happening yes. in a high-level tournament. Right. And these are, like, the situations <laughs> that are, like, your nightmare situation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How We're not going to give you the easy ones. Right? <laughs> get how do you deal with that high stress yeah okay. so you know really I think you did wonderful in the beginning yeah. just watch not letting it get out of control because you took control and then you kind of just gave it back okay yeah right in the beginning perfect mm -hmm. just take it and sometimes you got to make the hard call you really do just get up and try to fight me right <laughs> and you need to figure like do we just kick him out of the tournament right there I don't know he didn't take a swing he calmed right. down is he calm enough to continue fighting you saw the second we said, let's refight it, that we went like, okay, fine. <laughs> Ooh, let's stop that right there. <laughs> right? <laughs> let's stop that right there. Okay. All in all, though, it was real good in the beginning. Just keep control once you take it. All right? Sure. Tugan, will you run us through the hit point locations? Okay, no problem. And in the sun, so we can see. I'll drop your shield. Okay. So, a valid hit location in amp guard, and I think it pretty much holds anywhere else, right? So, shoulder's gonna be where the joint starts. Is this shoulder and body, all okay. the way down to crotch level of the legs. Okay. And then arm all the way out to here. Past the wrist is a uh, hand, which hand on weapon does not count. Is there a best way to determine what is wrist and what's... When you say past wrist, if it's on the joint, is that count? What I generally say is anything past this bone counts as hand. The moment it's touching this bone, it is an arm. Got it. Yeah. And it can hit both locations at the same time and still count as the arm. Correct. Nice. All right. So leg is going to be the vertical slice up from the groin up to where the hip socket is. Okay. Okay. How do I know what's my hip socket and what's my waist? It, it, there's a bone. Yeah, in, there's a bone that's there. It's hard it, to. Okay. Yeah. Basically, I, where this bone connects in, right here is leg. You'll feel a bone and it connects into the hip socket right here. Yeah. Okay. And you're normally going to be a couple inches below the belt because their belt's going to sit normally on their hips. If you got a guy who's got their belt sitting on their belly, obviously you've got to adjust for that. Gotcha. Yeah. But you're looking at, even if you look at Brett. Right below that, that's leg. Gotcha. Right? And then leg is gonna go all the way down to the foot, where right below the ankle, and there's your ankle bone, and below that is foot on ground. As long as it's on the ground. If, as long as it's on the ground. If the foot is up, um, I believe, as long as the toe's down, it counts as foot on ground. Right? Yeah, I believe it's everything. Yeah. Everything's touching. Yeah. 
Can you show me the neck and the collarbone? Awesome. And then, yeah, we'll do the back. Neck and collarbone. So right where you get your slope up is going to be where your neck is. Rick, so can anything? you take a step forward? Yep. Nope, this way, into the sun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so anything below where the slope starts up, this is going to be your shoulder. Shoulder's going to be body. That's going to be dead. And then where you get into the arm, which is actually before this, is still arm. Yes. Right to there, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and you can see that when the fighter raises and lowers their arm, you see that part moving. And that's how you can be able to tell even below the bicolor tunics like that. Collarbone is torso. <clears throat> right. Collarbone is torso, but not once you reach inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So your throat is the nice soft area right here, and people can't speak when they actually get hit there, so <laughs> it's real easy to tell. <laughs> and turn around. And then back of the neck is again where you get your slope right here. It's slightly above this tabard. And then down to and butt is still considered body. Okay. Next question. Can you show me, there was an example in there about shield. What was acceptable? Because there is some, some equipment on equipment contact that's allowable. Yeah. Could you show an example of allowable and then the, like when it gets to be too much? Because okay. we know that one? if you tackle yeah. somebody, we're bad, right? Right. I can absolutely do this. <laughs> so... The general idea is I'm able to manipulate their equipment as long as I am not basically pushing them or moving them off balance, right? So this is absolutely acceptable. I'm only going equipment to equipment and I'm pulling out, right? Now even if he were to say try to hold on to it tight and I pull him some with it, we're still in a legal, ter uh, legal thing because I'm not applying force into him, right? Along these same lines, I am free to step up and push, right? But at this point, I only have my shield flat and I have not pushed his body, right? I'm just coming and we're stepping flat face to face. This is still legal contact. Where it becomes illegal is at the moment that I make a push into him, right? If he moves, then it is no longer legal. Is there kind of a telltale sign as a reef to, to know whenever it's been a push versus Tugan stepped back? Any? So, are there some? Yes. Unfortunately, it's very difficult. A lot of times, a player who's trying to make space will exhibit a lot of the same signs as being pushed. Simply, if he pushes me a little, I can go here, right? It actually push me just a little bit more, right? So I've got this. That was me being pushed. That same thing, I might try to make space, right? He comes in a little bit, and I go, and it kind of looks like I still fell back, but that was completely legal contact. So there is some difficulty sometimes learning it. Um, in general, if you see someone, you, you look for arm extension is what I would look for in a push most of the time. Because when so, we fall off balance, right? right? If I do this, you're seeing a push. If I'm here and you see this, you're expecting probably a push. If you see instead and a step back and I kind of lose, Right? Probably not a push. Okay. Right? There is every situation its own thing. I might be sitting here, he might step back, and I might need to extend my shield. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things you kind of have to get a feel for, but there are some signs that are definitely telltale. Okay. One last thing. Uh, Bane, if I could use your help on this one. Uh, one of you, will you show us the ideal situation on how to maintain control? Show us a fighting scenario, and you show us how you would have liked to have seen it done. Okay. So you're role playing the Reeve now, not the not the person being not the person getting smacked around by Tugan. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys, step. He's doing the step beating up. on me, right? Yes. Yeah. We'll just see. We what don't he does. trust don't you know. for control. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, lay off. Good, 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 good. Stop, 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 stop. No, no. Back up. All right, no, you're good. Step over here. <laughs> All right. Stay right there. <laughs> Hold on. about that going forward, but for right now, I'm warning you, if I see and feel like you're throwing intentional headshots, I will remove you from the tournament. But right now, 
it's just a warning and there's we're not going to do anything further but just make sure that you're being careful of the situation okay all right, all right. so for right now because of the headshots i'm going to refight this you are sure you're good to fight okay thank you let's start i thought you said you saw an arm before the head i told you because of the headshots and because of the way that entire thing went i am going to reset this fight Tap when you're ready. Back up. Lay on. Leg, leg again. Good. Stop, stop, stop. Dead, stop. Dead. That's one zero two again. So you were actively calling out what you were seeing, even though it wasn't like, bang, you took a leg. It was just leg, leg. Absolutely. Absolutely. The moment I saw the first leg, I'm going to call it. There's no reason, if it's an obvious leg, there's no reason for me to sit here and be like, uh, is he going to take the leg? It's easier for me to understand what's happening if I call it when it happens. Leg. Then I see fight, fight. Same leg again. He has not tried to go down. He has continued fighting. I called leg twice. We stopped the fight. There's no reason to continue because I've already made my decision, right? And once again, what have we talked about? My decision is the one that happens. So I don't need to wait for the fighters to continue <coughs> or wait for them to finish and to see what they're going to take, when they're going to take. I've already seen what I needed to see, and I've made the call that I'm going to make. Right? So we stopped it right then. Right? Last question. Any tips for Florentine? Any tips for Florentine? Because that's a practice. <laughs> practice. It's difficult. Is that reaving 201? Well, I, I mean... <laughs> I, I talked in the beginning of this class that when it comes to recognizing what shots hit where when, it just takes practice. Florentine is the hardest thing to reeve correctly. Yeah. Um, and it's, there's no fix for that. There's no like, oh, well you don't know this great trick, right? It's always gonna be a difficult thing to do. Practice and doing your best to pay attention, just really paying attention, hopefully having two reeves as well. Got it. Yeah, you kind of be able to, you have to be able to replay that fight in your head from when the actual first shot happened and then going from there. Everything else is kind of just BS. So, yep. I said that was my last one. Sorry, everybody. All right. I'm for no, real, for that was, real. That was good. Any other questions? What do you guys think? Useful? Yes, very good. It was useful, but it was very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs>